All right, what's up everybody? Let's look at this question today. We have this mass moving to the right and we're just gonna analyze the analyze what's going on, right? So the first question here we have is um, what is going on at x equals zero? What is the direction of the net force at this point x equals zero? So they don't ask you to, but I would definitely draw a free body on this um, problem. So when we're right here at this point, notice it does say there's friction. And so we're going to have friction. Remember, friction always opposes the direction of motion. So we're going to have friction coming back this way. Um, and then at x equals zero, there is no spring force, right? So essentially, that's our free body diagram like that. So you can see the question is, what direction is the net force? Where is it? Uh, what is the direction? Oh, net force. So we're going to go ahead and just simply say it's going to the left, right? And you just justify your answer. Uh, I would say something like friction. Friction opposes the motion. It always opposes the direction of the velocity, right? Opposes the direction of the velocity. Okay, and then we also know there is no spring force. So no spring force at equilibrium at the x equals zero point. And they actually say that in the problem somewhere, that there is no spring force there. So the um, only thing is friction, right? Let's take this a step further. Let's look, um, let's look over here. What's, it, what's our FBD look like over here? Well, once we start extending past x equals zero in the positive direction, we're going to have the spring force pulling back on it, right? So there's going to be some spring force coming this way. So there's still friction. Friction still opposes the motion, but there's also going to be some spring force coming in this direction. So you have two forces going backwards. What about when our mass is, say, over here? So before it crosses equilibrium. Well, in this case, our spring's actually pushing it this way, right? We have the spring pushing this way, and then friction is going to, again, still oppose the direction of the velocity. Now this would change if our, once our velocity changes direction, right? All right, let's move on. Question B, so they're giving you the graph just of the spring, right? So this is the graph just of the spring. And notice that this force is consistent with what I just said. So essentially when we're on this side of the graph over here, um, we have a positive force, right? That's our spring force going in the positive direction. When we're on this side of the graph over here, we have a spring force in the negative direction, okay? But notice friction is always negative. So when we add these up, let's just add up this, this one over here on the right. When we add that up, we're going to have friction to the left plus more friction uh, plus spring force to the left. So that means the overall force, let me go ahead and change color here. So the overall force is going to be less, let's say it's going to be right here. And then um, if we look back here in the back over here, this one we have spring force this way, we have friction coming back this way. So the overall force, the net force is going to be less than the spring force. So that might be, let's say it's going to be something like this over here. Okay, it should still be positive because it is going to be pushing it, it's causing it to move, but it's going to be less than that. Okay, and then we'll just connect the dots. So this should be something like, say like this, right, in this direction. Notice that these should be parallel to each other because you're always subtracting. Like whatever that spring force is minus the frictional force, um, that's going to be the same all the way through here. Um, I'm going to ask a bonus question here. I'm just curious if you guys can do this one. So this, let's say this, let's ask what is the meaning of the slope? What do you think is the meaning of the slope in this one? And I guess even another question would be, what is the meaning of the y-intercept? So I'm going to leave that as a bonus question. Maybe um, I'll put the answer um, in your question answer document. But think about it. See if you can figure out what's the meaning of the slope, what's the meaning of the y-intercept. All right, let's move on. Uh, is the graph consistent with part A? So in part A, remember we said the force at x equals 0 would be negative. And or to the left, and so you can see right here at the force equal to uh, when we're at x equals zero, the force is definitely negative. So the answer would be yes. And again, we can just say um, according to the graph, at x equals zero, force net is negative. 
which means to the left. Okay. By the way, you should be writing a little bit more than what I'm writing. Uh, the only reason I'm not is because I'm kind of talking at the same time. So hopefully you're getting what I'm saying. So the last part of the question, we've now continued moving. The uh, mass does come to rest, so it's going to be stopped over here. And we're going to do some analysis here. So this time we are doing our FBD. We're going to do a full FBD on this problem. So um, some of the obvious things, we have gravity, right? So we can call that FG coming down. We have our normal force. We'll call that FN going up. Okay, and then the spring, as we just talked about, the spring force is going to pull, it's going to be pulling on it this way, right? So we have our spring force pulling this way, force the spring. Okay, now in this case, since our velocity is zero, but it wants to move this way, right? It's trying to get pulled back. So to keep it at a velocity equals zero, there must be an opposing force of friction in this direction. Okay, and because it's not moving, this would be static friction. Okay, so FS, I mean, you probably want to make sure you're clear that that's not friction static, that that is um, spring force. This would be friction. Let's write it like this, F of FR, and then we'll write subscript S. So that's our FPD. And then the last question is, let's go ahead and derive the equation. And we're solving for the displacement X at that point. Um, in terms of these quantities. So remember, you do want to circle these. You should expect an, a derivation like this on the AP test. So make sure you circle the, the variables you, need, you want and make sure your answer is only in those variables. So um, we'll just kind of sum up our forces in the x direction, right? And we have two forces. We have the spring force to the left. Actually, let's write friction to the right minus spring force to the left. Okay, and then we always set that equal to ma. Since we're not moving, we will say that that is going to be zero, right? And so hopefully it's clear. Essentially, our friction should equal our spring force. Okay, plug in the equation for this. So this is mu times fn equal to spring force, which is kx. Notice I'm not going to put negative kx. That negative we kind of already took care of right there, so we don't want to double negify that. Um, otherwise, you know, we're going to have a random negative in here. So we'll just we'll just leave it as kx. Uh, now, can we stop here? We cannot because we still have our normal force. So look at what we were allowed to use. Normal force is not one of those. So remember, in our y side, hopefully at this point, you can just jump to the conclusion that the normal force is equal to mg here. If you want to fully do it out, you could do your summation, but I'm going to assume you guys are good to go at this point for this. All right, and then we just finish it up. So we're going to go mu mg equals, uh, let's just go ahead and divide by our k here. So divide by k, and that equals x. So again, one last check. Make sure you're good with all the proper variables. Check what you're allowed. And in this case, we are good to go. So now you should go ahead and uh, grade yourself, use the rubric that I provided, and see how you did. Let me know if you have any questions.